Hi everybody, welcome back to another week of distance learning. Um, I miss you guys so much. I hope you had a great weekend. Um, and before we get started, I do wanna say that I'm very proud of how you did on your test. You guys worked really hard um, and it just shows how hard you guys were working, um, especially since a lot of the stuff we covered was while we were distance learning. Um, and I know that can be difficult and I know it's been difficult for me to kind of not be there to help you guys out. Um, but I just want to say that I'm very proud and I know how hard you worked and I know um, and I can tell by your scores. So great, great job. All right. Um, let's go ahead and uh, get started. We had a weekend of fun stuff. Um, let's get started with some mental math to help us jump right in to math. Okay. Clear your minds. Let's get ready for mental math. Remember, no writing anything down. Um, make sure that you could pause the video if you guys uh, still need a little bit of time to work on something. All right. Um, and then make sure that before I give out the answer, you guys hit that pause button in case you need a little bit more time. All right. All right. Here we go. Mental math. It's Monday. Monday morning. All right. So um, I want you to start with the number five. All right. Next, I want you to multiply by the next odd number. Okay, so if we're with five, then we need to multiply that by the next odd number. What is the next odd number after five? Once you have that answer, go ahead and multiply those two numbers together. Okay. Now that two digit answer that you have in your head, I want you to treat those numbers as two separate digits and I want you to add up those digits. Okay. So add up the digits. Good. So now for our last step, I want you to subtract five. Okay, I hope you're ready. Here comes the answer. If you're not ready, hit that pause button. Hit it, hit it, hit it. It's right there. It's, right, oh, it's somewhere right here. It's somewhere right here. Sorry. All right. The answer for today's mental math is three. Great job. So today's video is not going to be very long. All I'm going to really do is run down a couple of um, some information from the test we took last Friday. Um, and then I'm going to go over two problems that I saw a lot of us miss um, or not get correct completely. Um, and then after that, I'm going to give you guys a chance today to correct your test. All right. So a couple of fun facts about our test. Um, the test on Friday was out of 12 questions. So the scores that you are getting in your emails today about uh, from the test you took, uh, that score is out of 12. The last question was a bonus. So there were 13 questions on the test, but your score was out of 12. Okay. Um, if you got eight or more, it means you passed the test and that was a lot of you. So great, great job. Okay. Um, the median, oh, some data analysis for you guys. Uh, the median of our scores was 10 points. So that's what the most, that's the score that showed up the most. Uh, when I analyze that data. See, it does come in handy. I still use it. Okay. Um, and shout out to six people who got 12 or more correct. So that means they got a perfect score. And in some cases, they even got that bonus question correct as well. So congratulations to you. Um, so let's go ahead and go over some of the questions that a lot of us missed. The most missed question was the question about Pete and Jacob running in two different races and trying to find the difference between those two. And the other one that a lot of us missed was on rounding. Um, so I'm going to go over those two questions real quick for you today. So let's get ready. If you do not have something to write with and take notes, I would highly recommend that you guys um, have some some pencil and paper next to you so you can take some notes especially if this morning you saw your quiz score and you got these two questions wrong 
And that was a lot of you. Um, the question about the time difference between Pete and Jacob, out of the 32 of you that took the test, only seven people got it right. So I'm definitely gonna go over this question today, okay? All right, let's get pencils and paper ready and join me back here, let's go. All right, so I hope we are ready um, to review some of these problems. Now, the first one on time. Um, I wanna go over first, like I said earlier, it was a question that most of the students missed, okay? And I can kind of tell why uh, we missed those questions, okay? Uh, so first of all, let's take a look at the question. Uh, it told us that Pete ran his race in 13 minutes and 39 seconds, and that Jacob had won his race in 14 minutes and second seconds, and 16 seconds. Um, and so the question asked us who ran the fastest and by how much? Now, if we're looking at these numbers, it was easy to tell that Pete ran the fastest because his mile or his race was in 13 minutes while Jacob's was in 14 minutes. So just by looking at this, this information, we can tell that Pete had won his race. What we needed to find was the difference between these two. And I know that when we looked at time difference, um, I did not show you to subtract these numbers. And I can tell that a lot of you subtracted these numbers and thought, yep, this is it. A lot of you said, well, uh, 14 minus 13 is one, and 39 minus 16 is 20, what, 23? And a lot of you gave me that as your answer, and it showed up a lot. The thing is that when I showed you how to do time difference, I never showed you just straight subtraction. Okay. Yes, the word difference does make us think of subtraction, but we cannot do that with time because time doesn't run on a, on a tens place scale. With tens places like tens, hundreds, thousands, those are simple. And you guys showed me on standard algorithm problems that you guys are good there. But we cannot do this because time runs on 60 second loops. So there are 60 seconds in one minute. There are 60 minutes in one hour. So when we're trying to figure out time differences, that scale is every 60 minutes. And our numbers are every 100 numbers, right? We go by, or sorry, by tens places, okay? Um, so we can't simply just subtract these two numbers to find the difference. The, re the way that I taught you was to use a number line. So, All right. you so as you can see behind me, I have set up my number line. On my number line, I have started on the, uh, what is it, your, on your left side, um, I have started with the smallest uh, number or the, sm or the shortest time, which was 13 minutes and 39 seconds. So this was Pete's time. And then the other one, I have my finishing time of 14 minutes and 16 seconds, okay? To solve, I need to say, well, I need to get, I need to find the difference between this time and this time. And I know that time runs on 60 second loops with seconds and minutes. So what I need to figure out is how many seconds will it take me first to get to my next minute? Okay. I know that my next minute here is going to be 14 minutes. So how many seconds do I need to get from here to here? Okay. Sorry, that should... Was taking me to the 14. I'm sorry. Okay, so we know that if we subtract uh, 39 from 60 seconds, that we still would need 21 seconds. Okay, we would need 21 seconds here. Okay, and so for us to then close out to find the difference between um, Pete's time and Jacob's time, we would have to then add the number of seconds here. So we know that we, from 14 minutes to 14 minutes and 16 seconds, we would have a total of 16 seconds. So now to figure out the difference between these two times, we would have to take the seconds here and the seconds there to add them up. Now, I'm not gonna do all the work for you because you have to do corrections. So when you submit this to me, and I'll explain how you submit this at the end of class, okay? When you submit this to me, I want you to figure out what is 
the 21 seconds here plus the 16 seconds I have here. What is that difference going to be between the two times? All right. All right. And for the second most missed problem was this problem on rounding. You were asked to round the number 676,527 in three different ways. Okay. So for rounding, the reason why we round is because we are looking for a reasonable estimate. Again, an estimate is a is an educated guess. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to round this number right up here. We're going to round it up three different ways. The first way that we were asked was to round to the nearest hundred. Now, I know that this class is super smart and that you guys know your place value. So I know we all know that the number five here is in the hundreds place. Okay. To refresh our memories on rounding, when we round, we look at the number to the right, our neighbor to the right. If the number to the right is four or lower, so anything like zero, one, two, three, four, that means this number is going to stay the same when we round. When we round, uh, when the number to the right here is five or higher, so five, six, seven, eight, or nine, we're going to go ahead and round up. All right. So as we can tell, this number here is two. So that means that this number that we're rounding, the five, is going to stay the same. The way that we are going to round this one is that all of the digits are going to stay the same. Except after the place value that we are rounding. So after we have determined whether or not this 5 is going to stay or go up, the rest of the numbers after that are going to be zeros to give us an estimate or rounding. Okay? Let's take a look at our next one. The next one was given us, that was given to us, was said that we needed to round to the nearest thousand. I know this class is smart and you guys know your place value. So we know that this first six here, that is in our thousands place. So to round to the nearest thousand, we want to look at the neighbor to the right. Now this is five. And according to the rules of rounding, anything five or higher, will move uh, this number up, okay? So that this means that we're not touching the first numbers, the ones to the left of what we're rounding, okay? So this means that we're gonna, because of this five here, we're gonna move that six up to seven. And the rest of the numbers become zeros. All right? The last one was uh, being asked to round to the nearest 10,000 and so for the nearest 10,000 this 7 here is our number to the nearest 10,000 and we have to look at our neighbor to the right to tell us whether this number will stay the same or will be rounded up this number is a 6 so according to the rules of rounding anything 5 or higher which includes 6 will round the number up so this means that, that six, that first six is going to stay the same. We're rounding the seven up to eight. And every single number after that becomes a zero. Hi, everybody. All right. So I realized this morning when I was looking at the video that the last part had no sound. Um, so I'm going to just re-record that last part um, and just let you know what your assignment is. So your assignment for today is to submit a Google Doc with your unit for test corrections. Okay. On your student full on the shared drive with the math assignments, uh, there is a document on there uh, that has all of the questions for you to answer for each of the problems that you got wrong. All right. I want you to start off by giving me the question. And then I want you to type up the answer. What was the correct answer? After that, I have two reflection questions for you to answer. Um, first one is, what steps did you take that caused you to get the answer wrong? So did you maybe read the problem too fast? Um, maybe you skipped over some information? Um, or maybe it was something you didn't understand? 
And then how did you correct it? Uh, did you watch the YouTube video and say, oh yeah, great, now I understand and now I understand the steps I need to take for things like rounding or telling the time or telling the difference between two times. Um, so how did you correct that? Maybe you said, oh, I forgot to carry the one, so I carried the one this time um, when I was subtracting or adding. All right, so uh, three questions um, for each one of that you got wrong. Um, and like I said earlier, a lot of you didn't get very many wrong. Um, but if you have any questions with anything, if you are not understanding something and you're looking at a question and you're like, I don't understand why I got this wrong, please feel free to come and talk to me. I'd love to help you with that. All right. Um, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for bearing with me and for this whole YouTube mess. Um, I can't wait to see you guys sometime, um, either via Zoom or in person. All right. I'll talk to you guys later.